Hello again, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 2E, Navigation. Now what we're going to see here is that navigation involves elements of vector addition and subtraction along with uh, some two-dimensional kinematics. Uh, the primary kinematics quantity that we'll deal with in navigation is velocity. Although we will use uh, displacement and um, rarely we will use acceleration. So we're going to begin with um, aircraft. Uh, before we look at the um, analysis that's involved, we need to define some terms. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see them listed here. We have the um, course velocity, which is V sub C. This is the speed and the direction uh, in which the pilot points the plane. We have V sub W, which is the wind velocity, again, speed and direction of the wind. And we have V sub T, which is track velocity. Uh, this is the speed and direction that the plane actually goes. Um, most of the confusion comes about between these two. So think of V sub T as what the plane actually does. Now we'll look at a simple example to illustrate um, not only the theory but what these uh, terms mean. Uh, suppose you're a pilot <clears throat> at location A and you want to fly to position B which is directly to the east of A. So you want the plane to go this way. And we will say that the wind is from the north that is, it points directly to the south, or it's at 270 degrees. Now, if the pilot were to set the, the course or point the plane directly at point B, uh, what would the plane actually do? So think about that for a second. Uh, the wind, because the wind would be pushing to the south the entire time, we would say that the, the plane would get pushed off course. Um, ultimately, the track velocity would be some direction other than due east, other than at point B, and it would be some angle to the south of east. Okay? Now, in a vector sense, uh, this is the critical relationship. In a vector sense, we would say that the course velocity points directly to the east. This is which way the pilot points the plane. The wind points directly to the south, and the track, what the plane actually does, is the vector sum of V sub C and V sub W. So course plus wind equals track. And this is the relationship here. All right. What we see here is the relationship shown in a, in a graphical vector addition sense. Uh, of course, the same principle would apply uh, if we had um, angles that weren't east and south. Um, if we needed to add the vectors mathematically, the same vector relationship would apply. Now, you might say to yourself, this isn't a very sensible way uh, to get where you need to go. So, uh, what we'd rather do is uh, set a course that in some way compensates for the wind speed and direction so that the plane, the track velocity, actually points where I need to go. All right? So, what we're going to do is rearrange it. We're going to rearrange this navigation equation so that it solves for the course velocity in terms of track and wind. All right, so we're going to subtract V sub W from both sides. We get a relationship that says course, the course equals the track minus the wind. It says the same thing we did we had before, but in a different order. And if we look at what the right side of the equation, track minus wind, if we look at that using these vectors graphically, we, again, we know A and B. We know where we are, 
and we know where we want to get to. So in other words, this track is what I need the plane to do. So this is known, right? So here's my track. I'm going to take the wind vector, which points to the south, and flip it around. Negative wind vector points to the north, and I'm going to add it to the track velocity. So this is track minus wind. And what I get is a course velocity that compensates for the wind. This would be the proper course. As a pilot, this would be the course I would set given the wind is coming from the north such that my plane would actually fly towards point B. All right. So once again, recall what we mean by a negative vector. A negative vector means it's in the opposite direction. So V wind points to the south, negative V wind points to the north. All right. So now this uh, relationship is circled in blue because you will not see it on your formula sheet. So this is something you want to remember. Um, incidentally, this is why um, the very best weather stations in the world uh, are found at airports because air traffic controllers need and uh, navigation computers actually need up to the minute um, real-time wind speed and direction because they know where the plane needs to go <clears throat> but they need to constantly uh, correct the course if the wind is changing um, to account for the wind speed and direction All right. if you've ever driven up uh, I-95 uh, through South Philadelphia, you realize how close the airport is to the highway. All right, so the air, the um, um, the airport and the um, runways are really just a couple of hundred yards off. And if um, you know the course correction is not done properly, uh, you could put the plane right down on the highway, uh, which would make rush hour a lot harder than it already is. All right, so here's a typical typical problem. A pilot needs to fly to an airport that's a given distance away, a distance at some angle. Again, this is a, um, a position vector. And then in 2.25 hours, we're given a wind vector, 46.1 kilometers per hour at 225. Uh, we have a table list the components uh, for the track velocity, negative wind velocity, and the required course velocity in the table. All right, so again, we know that course equals track plus negative wind or, or minus wind. So um, the, the only the, the common difficulty, people try to add this vector and this vector. The problem is this is a position or a displacement. So we need to convert it somehow into a velocity. So we can say that these velocities are, are considered constant. <clears throat> so we can say that x equals v times t. Uh, we can leave out the acceleration term because it's 0. And we can rearrange it so that v equals x over t or t equals x over v. So now t, of course, is not a vector. So it doesn't affect the, the direction of the position. If we need to go this far in this amount of time, we can divide them, divide the distance by the time, and this will give you the magnitude of your track velocity. From that point, you have a track velocity at 125. You have a wind velocity at 225. Uh, you already know how to find the components of each one of those. Um, remember to uh, switch the angle of the wind vector because we're adding the negative wind vector here. All right, so here's your answers. And again, if you want to uh, make sure that you can generate these, um, note that the course velocity is uh, negative in the x direction, positive in the y direction. That's quadrant two. And we end up with a mathematical direction of 118 degrees.
based on um, what quadrant it's in. All right. Now, we're going to move to boats and rivers. Uh, a boat on a river behaves like a plane in the air. Uh, the current of the river is to the boat what wind is to the plane. So it tends to push the boat in the direction of the current. Um, there's a possibility that you could be dealing with a sailboat, in which case you might have to deal with wind and current. So we're going to call the uh, speed and direction of the current V sub cur or V sub C U R R. It takes the place of the wind in the navigation vector equation, so they be behave the same way. Track equals course plus current, or course equals track minus current. So wind to a boat, or wind to a plane is like current to a boat. Now these tend to be a little easier than airplane navigation because typically uh, the vectors can be arranged um, as the legs of a right triangle, as you'll see in a minute. We will demonstrate with a standard problem. Uh, here's a guy in a rowboat. He's on the south shore. Um, the current is flowing this way to the west. We're given the current 2.6 meters per second. And we're also given that the river is 236 meters wide. Now we're going to say that the guy can row with a course velocity of 5.74 meters per second in still water. So that's how fast he can row the boat. Uh, he would like to get directly to point P. Um, he doesn't know a whole lot about vector addition, so he sets his course and he points the boat directly across the river. Now, you'll note that the course velocity, he points the boat straight across the river. So he points the boat to the north. The current is to the west. So they're at right angles. We're going to construct a, a vector diagram. We're going to draw the x component first, which is the current. So the current is to the west. Course is to the north. All right. And again, your common sense would tell you that the boat is going to go to the left and up. So this is the track velocity. He's actually not going to go straight across. He's going to go off in this direction here. Now using uh, some trigonometry and the magnitudes of the current and the course, um, you can do inverse tangent of course over current to get this angle, and then subtract from 180 to get um, the mathematical angle of the track velocity. Um, you just need to know a little trig. Now what we're asked in a problem of this type, um, A, B, and C deal with this vector diagram that we already drew. All right, So we know the course, the magnitude of the course velocity, we know the magnitude of the current, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the track, um, and again use trigonometry to find its mathematical direction. So A, B, and C are pretty easy. Uh, for D, E, and F, we need to know a little bit about the displacements. Um, so we're going to need uh, an associated displacement vector diagram. Okay, that looks like this. I'm going to give the displacements the same um, subscripts. So we have a, a displacement that's associated with the course straight across. We have a displacement that's associated with the current. We might call that the downstream drift, right? We also have a d sub t, or a displacement that's associated with the track. You might call this how far the boat actually travels. Now these are straight line velocities, so these triangles are similar. Whatever angle you get for the velocity diagram also applies to the displacement diagram. All right, so we do know that the width of the river, which is associated with the displacement of the course, we do know this uh, value. So once we establish that, um, we can use similar triangles or trigonometry uh, to get all the other displacements here. How far downstream it goes, uh, what the track distance is, and so on. All right. Uh, you will need to use some kinematics uh, to get the time. Again, we have a um, constant velocity, so we can use um, 
x equals v times t or v equals x over t, uh, rearrange it and solve for t, uh, we would see that t equals x over v. But we have to make sure that we use displacements and velocities from the same part of the vector diagram. What I mean by that is these are similar triangles if we're going to use position or displacement and time and velocity we need to use the displacement associated with the course to solve for the time. We could conceivably use these two also so we could use the track displacement and the track velocity or we could use the downstream drift or the displacement associated with the current along with the velocity of the current. They would all generate the same time. All right. Now for G, H, and I, we now have a different situation. So it suggests in G that he wanted his track velocity to be directly across the river. Uh, in what direction should he set his course? Um, so your common sense would tell you, all right, you're going to point the boat somewhat upstream into the current. Um, we do need a new velocity diagram where, uh, again, we're rearranging the um, navigation equation to say that track plus negative current or course, or tra uh, yeah, track plus negative current equals course. So that's what we're saying here. We have negative current and track equals the course. So again, we need to um, use a little trigonometry. Knowing the course velocity and the current velocity, we can find the track and we can also find the angle. Note that this track velocity is not the same as the one that you solved for um, in letter C. Okay, So you're going to need to use some trigonometry to solve for the angle. Um, you'll note that this angle is not going to be the same as the angle you saw for in the other triangle. All right. Once again, you're going to want to use uh, kinematics to solve for the time using this new track velocity and the width of the river, and you'll find that the time is different than it was the first time. All right. So that'll do it for navigation. And next up is projectiles. Until then, see you again soon.